Uh, the first thing that we observed is that only the constant polynomials are <coughs> invertible okay, in the ring of polynomials with rational coefficients, which is, again, I think it's something that you proved in a different way on homework number one. Um, but it, again, had to do with degree consideration. But this is how this norm sort of marries those two worlds together. Um, the second question was one that was a little bit uh, more interesting. It was a question about irreducibility. And it went something like, um, if we have a polynomial in Q of T that's irreducible, then uh, the norm of P is a prime number. I'm writing small today. So actually, I had asked you to think about the implication going both ways. So there's two different statements here. Um, the one going from right to left is one of them, and the one going left to right is the other. And we decided before we left on Thursday uh, about the truth of one of those implications. Which one of these implications did we settle already? I think it was the backward one. So give me the give me the argument for why the backward conjecture here is true. So that was one of the consequences of this, right? Because the only primes that we can get out of this norm, 2 raised to the degree of p, uh, is 0 or 1, uh, is if the degree of p is equal to 0 or 1. So that's actually significant. The degree of p equals 0 or 1. So if the norm of p is prime, then Let's assume, by way of contraposition, that P is not irreducible. So if P is equal to Q times R. And remind me, um, in, if we're assuming that P is not irreducible, then what do we know about Q and R? All right, great. So if we're saying that P is not irreducible, then each of these two things that we factored it into cannot be a unit. So neither Q nor R is a unit. Because again, the definition of irreducible is that any way we factor it has to have one of the factors be a unit. There's no way around it. So there are no interesting factorizations for something that's irreducible. Um, but as Nick was saying, if neither Q nor R happens to be a unit, that tells us something. It tells us that the norm of Q and the norm of R are what? They're not equal to. They're not equal to 1. And if the norm is not equal to 1, then when we take the norm of both sides of this equation, what happens? <coughs> norm of Q times R. Where do you want to go from here? Norm of Q times norm of R. Yeah, let's use that multiplicative property. Norm of Q times norm of R. And then the left-hand side is still the norm of P. Now, why have we proved the statement we're trying to prove at this point? We know the norm of P is prime. Yeah, exactly. We've assumed that the norm of P is prime, 
and you're saying that you've got two non one two norms that are not equal to one. Exactly. So what we know from our definition of primality in number theory is that if you factor a prime number uh, uh, among the integers, then one of those integers has to be equal to 1. That's the definition that you learn when you first hear about prime numbers, whenever that is. Um, and this is in direct opposition to that, which is impossible. So there's our contraposition. That if our norm is a prime number, then p must be irreducible. Because if p were not irreducible, then we would be able to factor a prime number into a product of two things, neither of which is equal to 1. Two integers, neither of which is equal to 1. So the backward implication, definitely a true statement. Now, over the weekend, hopefully you had a chance to explore the forward implication. So the forward implication is that every irreducible polynomial can be characterized by having a prime norm. And what did you decide about that? So here's the burden of proof on this. Can we find a counterexample? So anytime you have a, a statement that you're not sure whether it's true or false, it pays to just try some examples first. Um, can we find an example of a polynomial which is indeed irreducible, but its norm is not prime? Its norm is composite. Can we do this? Well, if the norm of p is a composite number, what does that mean about the degree of p? It can't be 0 and it can't be 1, so the degree has to be greater than or equal to 2. Okay. So now the question becomes, does an irreducible polynomial of degree 2 or more exist? What do you think? So we're looking here for a polynomial which cannot be factored in the ring of polynomials with rational coefficients. OK. Here's an example. p of t is equal to t squared plus 1. So this is Emmanuel's candidate for a polynomial that will provide us with a counterexample to the forward implication. So how are we going to know whether p is or is not irreducible? So the claim here is that it is, in fact, irreducible. Right? But why? <coughs> we can't find two factors of it that are not units. OK. So if you're saying that we can't find two factors of p, both of which are not units, in order to prove that, in order to prove we can't find something, uh, let's suppose that we can. So suppose p is equal to q times r. And neither of q or r are units. So both not units. So in other words, what we're doing here is we're supposing that this polynomial is not irreducible. So now, if q and r are not units, but they multiply together to give us p, what do the degrees of q and r have to be? Right, so they're not units, so the degree cannot be equal to 0. But on the other hand, what's the degree of p itself? It's 2. It's a quadratic. And so if I'm going to factor a quadratic into a product of two polynomials which are not constant, what must the degree of those polynomials be? 
They have to be 1 and 1. In other words, the only way that we could possibly factor a quadratic polynomial that's non-trivial, right, that's going to prove that it's not irreducible, is to factor it as a product of two linear polynomials, degree 1. Right? What do linear polynomials look like? Yeah, a t plus b. In fact, we could we could take the a's and factor them out of everything if we wanted to. Let me put the a's out front, and then we could just have t plus b, or t plus. Uh, actually, let's do it this way: t minus x one, t minus x two. So if I can factor it in such a way, what does that tell me about the polynomial P? Say that again. Yeah, what are the roots if we can factor it in this fashion? Yeah, because they're x1 and x2. When we factor it in this way, we can see that those are the roots of P, but... If we're saying that this factor is over the rational numbers, then Emmanuel's point is that that makes all of the coefficients in Q and R rational. In particular, it makes x1 and x2 rational. And so now we just have to argue why this polynomial has no rational roots. How do we know t squared plus 1 has no rational solution? When you solve it, you get t is equal to plus 1. Uh, yeah, but that presumes the existence of such a number. We could use the quadratic formula. That's a fact that's in evidence for us. Um, problem is, how does the quadratic formula guarantee for us that the roots are not rational? How about we try this thing? D is not. Yeah, what's the discriminant of this polynomial going to be? The squared discriminant of this polynomial. Yep, so there's the formula that we have for the squared discriminant of a quadratic. Um, if we put in b squared minus 4ac over a squared, do that out, I believe we end up with negative 4, because b is equal to 0. a and c are both equal to 1. <laughs> so this squared discriminant is equal to negative 4. Now, if the roots are rational for a quadratic, then what do we know about this discriminant? Yeah, that it, it, that it needs to, actually it's more than that, more than just positive. This discriminant must be a perfect square of a rational number. Must be the square of a rational. Saying that it's positive just guarantees that the roots are real. It doesn't guarantee that the roots are rational. But we can draw the same sort of conclusion here. If x, if x1 and x2, the roots, were rational, then negative 4 has to be the square of a rational number. But how do we know negative 4 is not the square of a rational number? No square of a rational number can be negative. We can guarantee that just using the order property of the integers, for example. Um, so we eventually reduce the question of the irreducibility of p all the way down to the question of whether or not negative 4 is a perfect square of a rational number. And clearly, uh, because when we multiply two rationals, sorry, when we multiply any rational number by itself, the result is always non-negative. Uh, this determinant, discriminant, sorry, 
uh, is definitely not a perfect square of a rational. And so the forward implication is false in general.